When I was in medical school, I had some lectures about the liver and I found it very interesting. Many liver diseases cause scar tissue to build up in the liver or called fibrosis. And when fibrosis of the liver gets excessive to the point where it interferes with the function of the liver, we call that cirrhosis or cirrhosis of the liver. Many people think that's only alcohol, but, but no, many, many things that harm your liver can cause fibrosis or end in cirrhosis of the liver. And what I was taught back then was that cirrhosis of the liver could never be reversed, that this was a permanent state and you might treat patients and they would have a lot of symptoms and they wouldn't feel well and eventually they would need a liver transplant or even perhaps they would, they would die of liver disease. Near the end of my training, we were required to do a research project. I met with my, my mentor and my leader, Dr. David Perlmutter, who had done a, a lot of work and still has on this disease called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. I was offered a number of potential projects, but the project that, that Dr. Perlmutter offered me on alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency was, was very, very exciting. Like many conditions, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency can affect people in many, many ways. So it's a genetic disease, so you inherit two defective genes for alpha-1 antitrypsin. Some people are sick soon after they're born. So a few percentage of those people have life-threatening disease as infants or small children. Some people are a little bit sick in childhood, but most people are completely well in childhood. Some people get develop lung disease in middle age, and then some people develop severe liver disease late in adulthood, like when they're 60 or something like that. So it's a very, very broad disease. A lot of different things can happen to you. And we really didn't understand why some people do well and some people don't. And Dr. Perlmutter had done a study which had begun to uncover why some infants with alpha antitrypsin deficiency got life-threateningly sick and some others did not. And I found this to be incredibly exciting. And so he offered me to work with him on the next phase of this work. And, and, I, and I thought, well, this will be great. This will be a great two-year research project. We worked together and uh, got some great results presented them at an international meeting, you know, really moved the field forward. Uh, I thought, well, this is very exciting. So we kept working on it and, and then I kept working on it more later. And 29 years later, I'm still working on it.